Is it working? Yes, apparently it's working. So here we are again at Smud Tech offices, and I'm Francis, the founder of Smud Tech and creator of Smud. So welcome everybody for this presentation of Smud 8.5. Um, so, j'ai un délai de trois minutes sur ce que j'entends dans le casque. And hopefully we can start this presentation. But first, let me show you the team. So uh, we have uh, Laurent, which is there, hidden behind his computer. Alex, Basil is our brand new product specialist, which just started last week. And Erwan is somewhere else here. This is Erwan, uh, which is known as Walter Hinn on the, face, uh, on the Facebook uh, users group. And Jesse, our office manager, says you welcome. So this is our little corner of Paris, uh, and everybody is always welcome here. It's always a pleasure to, to meet the users. So let's go into what concerns us today, uh, which is SMUD 8.5. Um, so let me open SMUD, here we are, and start with a little demo of these new shape players. So first, I, I create a new compo with the control N uh, shortcut. And simply to access the new shape layers, you can use a right click and you have this new sub menu called sub layers, shape layers, sorry. So let's take uh, the simplest one, which is a circle, for example. And here you get a circle. So let's create uh, another shape, like for example, a star. And as for any element in SMUD, there are parameters you can configure. So for example, for the star, you have the number of points of the star, uh, the inner radius, so you can customize things as you wish. Um, and maybe we can create a third shape, like for example, an end side shape, let's say this one. So each of these shapes have two basic rendering properties, which are the, the field color and the stroke color. So if I keep only a stroke, here is how the circle looks like. Uh, this is with only the fill, and simply I can change my color here, the thickness of my fill, and so on. Um, now, uh, what we can do is to, as you can see now, we have like three layers, one over the other, and we can use these simple shapes to combine them into more complex shapes. So the first step to do this will be very similar to what you are used to on 3D layers, and it's called group generators. And when I do this, I'm going to merge the three shapes into a single one, and I have to select which renderer I'm going to use. So in this case, I want the three shapes to look like the circle, with the red field on the, the thick uh, white edge. So let's merge them. Now you can see we have a group of shapes, uh, which is made of those three shapes. And um, for the moment, they are in the mode called pass-through, which means that these are three independent shapes, and the rendering order, as usual, is from top to bottom in this mode. Uh, but if you look at this, you have some other possible operators. Uh, for example, let's put the inside shape into the add mode, and as you can see, it's merging the two shapes into a single one. And we can also merge the, the star with the circle in order to obtain this single large shape. So I can still configure everything in real time because as you know everything in SMUD is in real time actually. And that's a, a simple example of how to combine shapes. Um, then we have other shapes like for example the text shape which is very interesting. With the text shape you can enter just any text you wish. So any text you wish. Uh, let's make this a bit bigger. In two lines, we can rotate it, change the scale, and now we can continue working the shapes together. So, for example, the, any the text I entered could be used in subtract mode in order to, mm, maybe it's not the best example, sorry about this, uh, in order to, yes, like subtract from the, from the shape. And as you see here, there is a percentage which enables you to morph between the non-added shape and the fully subtracted shape. 
So actually we can do this on all the shapes and it's quite in an interesting way to model things to make more and more complex shapes and to combine them uh, and make animation very quickly. So our hope is this new shape layers is to open really the doors of real-time motion design like ma making many vectorial things which are typical in motion design accessible in the world of uh, real-time content design and real-time software. Uh, another very interesting mode here we have is the replace. So basically the replace replaces the previous shapes by the new ones but again you can combine this with the percentage and then you will have a kind of morph which is really easy to create inside SMUD and enables you to, to morph from one group of shapes to, to another one. Uh, so that's really the basics of the, the shape. Ma many things can be done and maybe I'm going to show you another example. So let's start a new composition with control N again. So in this new composition, I'm going to show you again a, a text layer. So let's create our text layer. Let's choose a, a font. So for example, the Gotham font. Uh, which is here. Uh, I can make it bigger, use the bold version, again a bit bigger. And now that I have this shape, I can make it editable. With, so it went very fast, sorry, let me do it again. Uh, with a right click edit shape. I can make any shape editable. And now what we are going to see is that these letters are actually made of basic shapes. And these basic shapes, I can really take them one by one, one by one, and totally edit. Like, let's change, for example, these points. We have directly access to the tangents, so it's very easy to start from a, an initial drawing and to, to change the, the the look of it. Um, so now I propose you to transform this little O into something a bit further. So we could. Like, what you can see is the O is made from two basic shapes, like the outer circle and the inner circle, which is in exclude mode. Uh, so now we can make, let's say, this one a bit smaller, duplicate it with Ctrl D, and we start to have a little face, and let's create a new basic shape from scratch. And here you can see how easy it is to create basic shapes, because you can directly edit the tangents of your shape. So now I have a kind of smiling face. I can again put this in exclude in order to remove it. And I have an happy smooth logo like this. Now let's do some smooth techniques. Like one of the things we like to do is exposed parameters in smooth. So for those that don't know exposed parameters, the idea is that we can create like high level parameters by programming the, their behavior on the low level parameters. Uh, so for example, we are going to create um, a percentage parameter and we are going to take the smiley and take the points of this. So let me go here and bring the points of the smiley as a new track of the parameter. And now with the auto key, I can uh, like select a position and change the look of my shape. Uh, so let's make it, for example, a bit disappointed. Like he's disappointed by all the noise in the office while we are doing a Facebook Live, <laughs> for example. And now this is a parameter like this, which is doing the interpolation between the happy face and the sad face. By the way, we can add some other parameters to this, but first, let's do something we very often do inside SMUD, which is to connect uh, devices, control devices. So let me show what I have on my office. It's a simple MIDI console, like uh, it's very easy to find. And I'm going to learn to associate my parameter to one of the fathers of this console. And to do this, it's rather simple, you right click on the user interface, select the parameter you want to automate, learn, 
move the feather and okay we have our parameter so this is quite easy to do let's go back on the full screen now we have this and what we can do now is to make this behavior more complex like by putting more modifiers and for example as a modifier we can use uh, the the edge uh, the fill color modifier sorry and to change the, the color of my face so for example it, it's going to start green and putting this in the parameter using the auto key again now i'm going a bit farther let's say in the middle and select yellow and like red when it's really disappointed and now both the color and the change of the shape are linked to this midi parameter so now this is like a, a, a little stereotyp um, a stereotypic example but this can actually be used in a lot of scenarios if you want to continue playing with mod one natural next step is to put some post fx so smod is known for its numerous uh, modifiers 2d modifiers that you can see here it's really there are a lot of possible things including isf modifiers uh, which are shaders that really extend uh, the range of possible effects but now i'm going to do like a, a simple blur um, so blur in smod is a huge topic it's really a powerful effect uh, i'm not going to detail everything but just <coughs> creating a simple let's say zoom blur uh, now i increase the radius um, and you see this is like the central point of the blur so if i want to animate this a little bit i can create for example a back and forth loop on it and instead of a simple sinus let's select like a noise function uh, to, to bring some animation into this visual so um, uh, we can also do this another noise function for the um, vertical movement or maybe a white noise to make it even more shaky and now uh, the last thing i want to do is to have this uh, shaky effect only active when the face becomes angry uh, and for this simply i can take my parameter that already contains the look of the face and the change of the color and link to it the um, oh sorry uh, i need to log this guy and i can link to it the intensity uh, from 0% to 100% of the blur so now we have all three things combined together and like this is a small footage we can reuse in many different ways either to do live performances or to simply create compositions make a timeline and export it as a video um, so if you wish to do this let's say for example we can take our main timeline bring the parameter inside it um, no that's not what, what i meant this one uh, let it move for example from uh, zero percent to one hundred percent in 10 seconds and now we have like a classical compositions where we can do play on it simply and have our animation uh, with the face slowly smoothing from happy to angry and this thing can be exported as a video very simply by right clicking here select export video so for example let's make a h264 file uh, which should be here i guess uh, 25 frames a second, 10 seconds, uh, full HD, and start immediately. And now, as you can see, it's running 250 frames really, really fast. So that's one of the major things we like in SMOD. Running is extremely fast. It's about 100 times faster than After Effects, for example. So this is really a great aspect of the software. And now, maybe you don't see it on your screen, but uh, we can open VLC and we have our video ready to use um, so it's really great because now we are like at, at the frontier between motion design live performances and all of these things can be combined together in a consistent framework and that's basically what SWAD 8.5 uh, mostly offers as a new feature 
uh, another thing with these shapes is that uh, since we can edit Bezier passes, we can also use this for compositing operations. So for to illustrate this, I'm going to show you this classical example of SMOD, uh, which is called camera mapping and which is embedded with the free version of SMOD. And so this is uh, mixed 2D and 3D composition. So how does it work? It's based on uh, the technique called camera mapping. So the 3D view shows the behind of the scene. So first, this scene has been worked on Photoshop. And then there has been a simple 3D modeling made uh, with the camera projecting the textures back, which gives a very simple 3D model uh, in multiple parts. So we have the um, white camera is projecting the textures, and the red camera is filming the, the same textures. And also, we add a lot of post-processing effects, like for example, the lens flare is made with mud. Is this layer we can totally configure all the aspects of it. Then we have an exposure, post-fx, uh, some vignetting effects, etc. So this is a 2D compo. If we zoom, we, we can see the pixels, because at the end, we are computing pixels. But it's living in the, in the 3D world. And now, one key aspect of SMUD, and why we, we love SMUD, is that uh, you can very quickly answer to changes, like when the artistic director changes his mind. It's really easy to, to do the compositing in real time, and that's one of the, the, the major things SMUD is being used for, actually. And let's say, for example, that now we would like the grass to be more green than it is. Um, uh, we can simply, so it, the grass corresponds to one of the layers which are here, so I can show you the different layers. In this case, it's the compo hill layer. And if you want to, see, to make it more green and like to have control, a precise control, we can use the color balance effect. So the color balance, it has parameters for the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights. So now, for example, let's say I want more green in the midtones, but I don't want this effect to be applied on the whole image. I only want it on some parts, which is actually the, the hill part. So I can use a Bezier mask, and this is really a new feature of 8.5, and which our users are asking for since years. So basically, it becomes very easy to indicate where we want the color modifier to be applied. So here we have it. Of course, to make this more nice, we need some feeder. So the feeder parameter is very easily accessible. And now we can just finalize the basic shape. And we made our co color co correction very quickly. Maybe it's a bit too strong to artificial, that would be something more natural, for example. And now we can go back to the whole composition, and we see that it has been corrected. So bef before, after, looks like that. So these kind of things are now very easy. It's like really the basics of compositing, but uh, we were still missing this Bezier mask and stuck with the polygonal mask. So this time it's now finished. And we have really powerful tools. It's really easy to, to change those masks quickly. Uh, you can detach the tangents, re recreate it from scratch. It's really fast to, to make. Um, so these were like the main new features for Smart Studio. And as you can see on this slide, there are many other features in Smart Studio 8.5. Uh, in particular, we upgraded the ISF shaders uh, library, so there are new effects. We fixed the support of the webcam uh, with direct show. Um, okay, so sound doesn't work on this slide, but uh, you can see many new features, uh, others which I won't describe here because it would make things too long. Uh, and Maybe now I can show you some of Smart Station. So just as a reminder, all I showed from the beginning is available in our free version, <coughs> Smart Studio 8.5, which we already uploaded on our, on our website. So while I'm talking, you should be able to already download it and use it. And as a reminder also, the only limitation is the Full HD resolution. 
and also the professional video codecs. But uh, most of Smart Studio is actually totally free, and you can use it for creating visuals, uh, doing audiovisual performances, and, and so on. Um, let me now introduce Alex, which is the other key developer of SMUD, and here is Alex, the king. Hi everybody. <laughs> and he will be explaining a bit the new things that are available in SMUD Station. Okay, so I think I have a, a slide explaining that. I don't uh, remember exactly where is it, uh, but... Uh, this is so... Um, Okay, you can see me, I don't know, but uh, here are some s different features new in Smud Station for happy new few who have this uh, edition of Smud uh, Engine. So for today we have uh, a lot of uh, video and uh, network picture. A lot of uh, network for protocol have been added for different kind of uh, usage. So the first network stuff is uh, main tool for for show controlling, so you can have OSC packet sender and uh, SACN support. People who are doing um, uh, LED controlling know this uh, kind of protocol. It's very useful because you have a multicast uh, support uh, inside it. And uh, you are, we have also a different kind of um, tracking system protocol added for camera tracking, augmented reality stuff. It can be good to know the camera position to, to make real-time compositing with screen key and stuff like that. So everything in stations for this version is very network-based and video-based. We have a lot of enhancements into video device too, like uh, DeltaCast, we updated the driver, we had HDMI supports, and uh, of course so we have also a big device support is for Oculus View. I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> it's pretty huge. So it's thanks to this guy. He work a lot on it. And uh, so you can have all your 3D simulation in this mode station on the on your headset. And it's very nice for content designer, but also for artistic director to see what's happened in SMUD before being real time in the show. So here it's a different kind of uh, feature we had for this station edition. So um, uh, nice stuff for LED mapping, of course, about uh, the SSN protocol is uh, you can send uh, 12 bytes uh, depth uh, pixel color in your LED screen. It can be pretty good if you have a, a big gradient on big uh, resolution screen. And um, of course, for people who are doing network and uh, uh, stuff for video transports, NDI, I've been uh, announced too. So network is big uh, stuff in SMUD uh, since 8.4 version. You can have uh, SMUD remote systems. You have uh, sh project session sharing. Everything has been announced and stabilized and uh, very quicker than uh, the 8.4 version so no smart uh, network is uh, enabled by default so you can have uh, all the powerful of networks in smart 8.5 that's uh, pretty all the stuff we, we have in this version maybe a little bit of um, uh, mappers in virtual screen but it's more uh, feature that can be explained by Francis, but uh, to make all the mapping capacity of SMUD uh, be greater, the, this is part of the new feature. So I think I've made um, all the explanation for this, and uh, we can go for the next uh, slide. Uh, and maybe Francis can uh, take the yeah. So. Back. I'm back here to show you some other stuff, especially in Spot Station. So maybe not all of you know Spot Station, so I'm going first to show you like uh, one of the example projects of Smud uh, Station, which is the architectural mapping project, uh, just to show you a bit what Smud Station looks like and uh, what we, how we use it and what we can do with it. 
So this example is actually a castle mapping. So uh, what you can see here is the 3D stage preview of this cat castle mapping. And Smart Station is built around this 3D stage that contains like all the physical objects that make part of the video setup. In this case, video projectors. We have two stacks of three video projectors. Uh, we have a model which is linked to what we call a content map. So this is the content map. It's uh, an area of pixels, basically, which is linked to the 3D model in this case. And Smart Station is also built around the pipeline editor. So the pipeline editor you can see in the bottom is like uh, showing, illustrating how the content flows through the setup uh, from the content made by the content designer still the final outputs of the, the media server. So here, for example, you can see each single view of the video projectors. And uh, the video projectors are built around what we call processors, which are simply uh, like compositions built inside, built inside the, the setup. And in this case, in the case of video projectors, we have the mapping tools here, so we can use any type of deformation grid and directly map uh, the projectors like this and then lock. Uh, also in the stage view, there are different interesting modes. Like this is the preview mode that assumes everything will be projected fully, but uh, that's not how things happen in real and to have a closer view of what might happen, here is the simulation mode. So the simulation mode is actually computing all the video projectors and then simulating them as light and simulating both the shadows, like here you can see the casted shadows of the central video projectors, and it's also simulating the pixels actually of your projector. So if you come close enough, you can see each individual pixel of the, the projector. And the last useful mode here is called the illumination mode, where SMOD directly computes the amount of fluxes that the surfaces will receive, depending on the power of the projectors, the size of the surface, the angle, uh, etc. Uh, so we can go back to the preview. And the last one also is the previsualization compo. So this is basically a compo made for uh, clients demos and this compo is reactive to whatever content we put inside it so now uh, my content is simply a face uh, a, a layer with one color per face but I can like combine here different layers let's put a modifier for example on this one like uh, a drost modifier for example and now I get this drosted texture on my castle and the, the preview is reacting to it. We have these nice glow effects and so on that help to make beautiful previews. And uh, it's really an efficient tool when working on content so to figure out how things will look like. Uh, I will not go deep into this, but of course it is smart so we can create real time content as any other layer. So for example, this is a little example with rotating lights which is computed inside the content map, uh, which is this one, and which is then uh, plugged onto the model, the 3D model. So it's really nice, like for example, this red light is actually not going out of the building, but with the preview, we can figure out that the effect will be working in real, because it's really, it's like if it was going out of the building, even if it's not. So that's the magic of Architectural mapping, I, I'm sure most of you already know this. So let, let's go now to some new features which are inside Smart Station. So I'm going to create a new project, um, which I'm going to call uh, Demo Fixtures, because Fixtures is one of the key new features of uh, Smart Station 8.5. So how does these fixtures work and what are they? So basically, the idea is that in addition to LED screens and video projectors, we can now create uh, fixtures inside the stage, and LED fixtures in particular. So the first step is to define one type of fixture. So for example, now I'm defining a single pixel fixture. I link it to some content map. Uh, I'm going to put this content map fully white for the moment. And this feature also I can configure some aspects of it, like uh, the color format, 
uh, does it have a separate weight channel and how will, be, how will it be previsualized? And now that I define this feature, I can instantiate it into the stage simply with a drag and drop and it proposes me how many I want of them and where should I place them. So I will start with a single one. I can duplicate it, add some more of those pixels. Uh, and if I even want more pixels, I can take all of this, turn it into a group, duplicate the whole group. And as you can see, I'm creating a full stage uh, with my single pixels. So they are looking a bit uh, big, so I'm going to reduce the, the size it's using to preview them. And now everything is still white because in my content map, everything is white. Uh, so I'm going to change my resolution because I don't need that many pixels. Uh, let's choose 100 by 10. Uh, here is my new content map. The little squares here are where the actual LEDs are mapped. So by default, it's using an automatic mapping, but this can be configured manually. And here I have these few dots, but another way to instantiate fixtures is to create arrays. So let's, for example, create an array of 10 by 10 by 10 pixels um, and put the content map white again, maybe and a bit bigger um, sorry I think something red went wrong I'm going to create them using the fixture array menu which is here okay here we have like a strip LED and I can change the number of LEDs change their spacing in space so now they are separated by one meter each I can change this make it a bit smaller and now I have this nice cube of LEDs uh, which is still fully white and let's say in my setup I also want a background LED a classical LED screen uh, so I'm going to associate it to a new content map which I, I call content map 2 So this is our LED screen, we can rotate it, rotate it again, put it a bit in the back, um, put it above the fixture bank, and now in my setup I have my cube of LEDs as well as my background, and both of them are linked to one of the two content maps which are here. So now that I have this, I can go in the content and for example, create, I have an easy to create layer which is called Monjory, which I often use for my tests, my own tests on Smud. So here it is. And this Monjory effect, I can either send it on the cube, send it on the back, uh, but also, if you want, we can go farther and, for example, create a camera mapping. So for this, I need to create a camera inside the stage which will define a viewpoint. Uh, so I need to rotate this one again. Uh, let's have a look from within the camera. That's how things look with the white background. Okay, and now that I have this camera, I'm going to use it uh, in order to create a camera mapping. So I'm not going to detail everything now because this needs a bit of practice on station but I'm going to show it like quickly like this uh, now that I have my 3D mapping I can take this layer and instead of sending it directly to one device or the other I can send it to the 3D virtual screen and it's actually going to send it in space to these two uh, fixtures so let's make the pixels a bit more bright um, this will be here and in order to illustrate it let's create for example a test pattern instead of the Monjory stuff uh, these moving bars so this is what I'm sending it's sending through the camera and then the camera uh, is 
sending to both the cube of pixels and the, the background screen. Uh, and everything now can still be motorized. So for example, if this LED screen has to move, we can link it to motors and like, let it move like this or let the uh, full array of LEDs move. And all of this will remain consi consistent in the 3D space. So pixel mapping is still quite a new thing uh, in SMUD. We marked it as a beta feature because clearly we are going to apply it on bigger and bigger scale events, but we already successfully applied it to a 22,000 pixels uh, installation controlled with SACN, and the results are really promising. And what we see is that this 3D workflow is really, really efficient. Uh, so probably there will be more of this in the future because what we believe is that like video is like merging with lightning in some way and what we need is new generation tools that can handle all aspects of the show in some integrated way and that's really where what we use SMOD for and why we, we love SMOD. Um, so I hope this little demo give you uh, some uh, I don't find my words, I'm sorry, it's the emotion, but uh, I hope you will like it. Uh, the whole team here is working hard for this, and maybe if you have like some questions, we can answer some questions. Uh, are there some questions? No. No. So the only thing you have to do is to... sound so I'm going to say you bye I hope you will love this version of SMOD join us on the SMOD users group on Facebook uh, many things are happening there use the free version for your pleasure use the paying version for our business thank you and uh, have a lot of wonderful moments for uh, with this software we do with a lot of love so bye bye from Paris and see you soon Bye. Bye.